Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Local Lens. My name is Edward McCarver, and my guest today is a, a very familiar person to anybody that's lived in the town of Wallingford for the past 50 or so years, uh, Tom Zapala. Tom, thank you very much for, for coming in today. My pleasure. Uh, was that a good introduction? Do you it think was you, good. It was well good. I think we did. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I think if, we, if there's somebody that represents uh, It's a Wonderful Life, I think you could say... Yours is probably one. Of course, you've been a barber said, for yeah, for so many. You still are a barber. I, I still, understand. Well, once yeah, a week. Yeah, once a week. Still, yeah, once a week. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Your story is, is a very interesting one. You actually got your interest in cutting hair as a young child in Sicily. Your father was a was a barber as yeah, well. Right. Uh, tell us about those it early wasn't days. By, it wasn't the by line. choice. Okay. I was forced to, <laughs> to learn the trade because it's. Uh, it's a sort of a trend. If your father is a barber, you go to become a barber. If your father is a carpenter, you become a carpenter. You learn the trade because it's uh, it's good in the life uh, for your life to know a trade in Italy and I guess any European country. They le you learn er early in age, and I I used to go to school of course, but uh, right after school I'm in the barber shop. Helping my father. So, so whatever yeah. the father did, you said barber, yeah, much, carpenter, yeah. whatever sure. trade the you son the trade, yeah. was expected to right. follow. He's expected to, yes, okay. sure, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, you've talked about, in doing research for this, I, uh, I found out you have talked about the first time you actually shaved a customer's face. <laughs> you were 11 years old at the time. I was, yeah. And your father didn't know about it. No, he didn't. He was um, home already. <laughs> it was quarter to 12. He went home, you know, and... Uh, this guy walks in and he wanted to shave because he had to, he had to go someplace. And I said, hey, "My father's home." So he, "Well, you do it." So he forced me to shave him, and I, I said, "Why not?" So I did it. You know, I was I had a stool to reach the chairs. I was able to reach him and uh, shave him, and I didn't cut him. I I cut my finger when I closed the razor. I was so <laughs> excited I couldn't wait to go home and tell my father I shaved somebody. And of course, the first thing my my father said, "Did you cut him?" I said, "No, I didn't." So he kind of encouraged me from that point on. He made me do more into, they just put soap so on he, people's So he face. wasn't angry with you? No, that, he, was you he was not. Okay. He was not. Uh, he was, he appreciated the character. I didn't mean, cut him, of course. They appreciated that part. And uh, he had more confidence in me that I could do more than just put soap people's face. Were you, were you nervous, on. actually? I was a little bit nervous, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, although I was familiar with the razor, he had given me razors some time to sharpen it. As a young age, you know, mm -hmm. and that was pretty much aware of the responsibility of a razor is very sharp. So you you, you got to you learn early in ages over there. <laughs> <laughs> How soon after age eleven? When is the second time you shave someone's? Face? Well, I did as I was. I was time goes on. You used to shave people on one side of the face, the smooth part, and you would finish in the front. You know the part which was hard to get to, and. Uh, Exactly. But then after that was nothing, nothing big. The people that trusted me, mainly with a face which is smooth, I was able to shave up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's let's fast forward. You moved from Sicily to West Haven, Connecticut, right. in 1955. Mm -hmm. uh, you were 17 years old, and short shortly after that, you began to work at Central Barber Shop in downtown Wallingford. Right. What was it like in those uh, in those early years? Well, I tell you, it was difficult to, for me. The, I didn't know the language, of course, and I didn't know where Wallingford was. I had to take a bus from West Haven to New Haven, then from New Haven walk to to the railroad station, and come to Wallingford, and uh, uh, it was it was kind of difficult because I didn't drive. I didn't. I didn't have a license. I was seventeen, and. Uh, you, Wallingford was, I didn't know where it was, Wallingford, and uh, I learned quick, you learned quick, and, but Jack Catale, which was my boss at the time, was Jeannie's father, was so good to me, I, and the first thing I did is I shaved them. Really? Yeah, he says, your barber? I said, yeah, because it was recommended by a beauty supply that came to a shop, you know, and uh, I shaved him, and he hired me. That was your job interview? Was, that was, was a shame. And, and, give me a shave. I asked the audition. I did. I, I gave him a shave. He was happy because uh, I did a lot of shaving at least. So it was easy for me to do. But it was, uh, 
it was a good experience. And I like Wallingford because it's a small community at the time, you know? Yeah, we, we want to get into that uh, a bit later yeah, on. Because I yeah. think you, you said some nice things about, yeah, uh, about Wallingford. Uh, I, and I remember, just as an aside here, I remember as a very young 10-year-old in, uh, in Wallingford, my father brought me to Central Barbershop. Mm. And I always, oh, I'm trying to, I, Gene Catala, I think, was always in the first chair. Yeah. And I think it was Louis in the last chair. And were you in chair number three? I was in chair number three. Right. Tony Grillo was the second one. Tony Grillo, okay. okay. Uh, Tony I, uh... Grillo was the second one. I was the third chair. And Louis was at the end. Then my father came and he worked on the fifth chair. Oh, oh there were five chairs? Yeah. Oh, I that, did not know that. But the boss put another chair after a couple of years that I was there. And uh, it, it was my father he used to work in uh, Seven Rock in West Haven. Seven Rock, okay. Yeah. Okay. So he was able to, you know, I went to hairdresser school, learned how to do women's hair, and he hired my father also. How busy was it in those early years? Wallingford was five barbers. It was five barbers on Center Street. There was the only one with five chairs. I think half of Wallingford or better came to Central Barbershop in those days. Right. Now you were at Central Barbershop from uh, 1955, and then in 1962, you opened your own shop. Um, mm -hmm. aptly called Tom's Barber and Styling Shop on right. Route 5. Now, what's the big difference in running your own shop, being the head honcho, as opposed to working <laughs> in another? Uh, is there, you're laughing. Is there, is yeah, there well, advantage? yeah, it, it's, it is an advantage because, I, as I say, I was a good teacher. I was there for 12 years working for Jack and, and, uh, and, and then Jean. And his brother Joyce come in once in a while. You learned it was the laws were a little bit different than it was today. Today you, you to open a shop I think you go up any time you want to. In those days you have to be under five five years on the a master barber's so call to learn the trade. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. like 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 an apprenticeship? Well you use like thing? an apprenticeship okay. you use, yeah. Oh. So that's so it was uh, it was quite a challenge because I uh, I was lucky to find a place which was cheap rent, you know, and I know the business, I had good customers, they follow me afterwards. Good. Yeah. Mm. Good. Again, we're talking to uh, Tom Zapala here at uh, Local Lens. Let's, uh, let's move on here, and in 2009, you sold the shop, but you actually, can you cut hair once a week right down at uh, Cornerstone Barbershop? Oh, no, I, could, I sold the shop, no, no, I did, I, 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 I I worked for, for myself for 55 years. Yeah, 55 oh. years, yeah, in my own shop. The cornerstone was after I retired. Uh, I, I was eight years old, I retired, and uh, they talked me into go work for him for as long as I want to. I said, look, I, I really don't want to work, you know, and, but uh, uh the nice young people there working, and uh, I, I kind of got talked into it. So I work one day a week. Right. No regrets? No regrets. No, no. I, I, I enjoy P see people. You know, it's uh, every time for me was a very difficult thing to do. And that got brought me back to start seeing people, and I, I'm people's person, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and you have mentioned, you are quoted as saying that Wallingford is – a great town to be a barber. Uh, you also say, you don't call them customers. You call them friends. A friend, yeah. Is, is it just Wallingford, or, or is it well, you find that? Or is it, is I, I find Wallingford to be a very welcome town. You know, I've, I've been involved with so many different organizations that I had no difficulty to find people to do volunteer the service. And I, uh, I enjoy working, of course, but... Uh, the community itself, he, he, I remember when I was in charge of the men's participation at 300th anniversary, we had a, I forget the, the amount of, uh, what do you call it, organization which the people volunteer the service. Oh, the, oh, the ter ter centenary. Yeah, yeah. I was, oh, okay. yeah, I was part of the Brothers of the Brush chairman. And there was no problem finding people to work. You know, it was really very easy to find them because... And the community itself, it's always been very welcoming people that they are. Yeah. Well, you've, you've also given back to, uh, to Wallingford. I, I know you helped find the, uh, the emergency shelter and uh, <laughs> also uh, are a member of the Knights of Columbus. Um, 
in your opinion, why is it important to give back? And why did you give back? And why to those two organizations? Well, I think it's because the Waldorf gave me the opportunity to raise a family and to be able to establish yourself, you know, in town. And uh, the shelter, I think, is one of the nicest things I could possibly say I did, rewarding for myself, because that there was a nice gesture to do that. And uh, I don't regret a minute that I put into it. I had a lot of hard time running it. And uh, not only run and find a location for, to have a place for them to stay, uh, I did find a lot of neighbors, a neighborhood, if you might say, that, but they were successful. It was all volunteer work. Mm -hmm. And uh, to find a volunteer was no problem. And that, that shows you the kind of community we have in Wallingford, you know, that uh, uh, we, we were able to run it. And I did it for over 10 years. So now they have a individuals that still running the shelter but I thought in those days was a uh, better serve to with volunteers you know okay that's my All opinion right. yep. Yep. yeah you also you said are, are very proud of your work with the with the Knights of Columbus you did some good things with that well, Knights, you know Knights of Columbus gave an opening to meet nice people which uh, with my religion you had to be a Catholic to belong and uh, the organization itself, it's uh, outstanding. It gave me the opportunity of meeting people and being able to serve, you know, and uh, we were involved in many uh, good things to, 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 to do charitable, charitable work, you know, and uh, I don't regret it. I did over 45 years. I was involved statewide, and uh, I, I still regret that we don't have a place we don't have a place anymore. We used to have it, a nice hall and a lot of members. But uh, today, if people have a different way to get involved, and uh, they don't go, uh, what do you call the I think all the, <clears throat> the organizations with the, like the, what do you call it, uh, uh, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't do that anymore, you know, they, they rather go to the bars and uh, mingle with other people, you know, and uh, in those yeah. days, the Knights of Columbus had their own Catholics, then you get the Irish, uh, they, they own their own places, and the Germans had their own clubs, you know, the Italian Hall was not a thing, you know, it was, uh, I was part of it also, the, the Italian Hall, but it's changed. The lifestyle has changed a great deal in uh, Wallingford. It was a nice small community is when I first came to Wallingford, about 15,000 people. Now we have 50, 54,000. Like yeah. 54, yeah. So it's, yeah. it was a small community. Everybody knew everybody. Yep. And there was that close relationship, you know, and uh, that doesn't, I said, doesn't exist anymore because yeah. you don't know who your neighbors are anymore, yeah. <laughs> you know? We're talking with uh, Tom Zapala here on uh, Local Lens. We're kind of doing a "This Is Your Life" sort of thing. I'm sure yeah. everybody. I'm sure all fifty-four thousand people must, at least fifty-three of them, must know who you are. Yeah. So um, now, you've been in this town. You're a barber. You get to know people. You cut hair. You meet. You know, they're not customers and friends. And in the 1990s, or maybe earlier. Uh, you become a member of the Wallingford Town Council. You decide Ooh. to run for council. Tell us first why you decided to run for office. And actually, I want to say, is it a more cutting business than the barbershop? The you know, I'm sorry you brought that up. <laughs> 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 because I, I knew better politics that uh, you really sh shouldn't get involved. You, know? the, you don't get any friends. In it's politics, a business. In politics. No, it's, uh, it, it, you have to, sometimes you can't express your own opinion on politics. But because it's always somebody feels different than you, you know? So when, I, when they talked me into running, really, they talked me into running, I didn't want no part of it because I, I knew I was very friendly with Joe Carini, Rocky Van Bacco, you know, all those, they were customers of mine, you know, and I knew what politics yeah, it's all about. And you, so, so you, 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 so, you sort of forget for a minute. You know, you, you, you forget about what 
what it consists of. Yeah. So I ran, and I was successful. But uh, I didn't have any enemies prior to being uh, or a politician, per se, you know? And I can't say the same when I get out. How long were you on the council? I think it was about 10 years. 10 years, yeah, okay. Yeah. And I enjoy every bit of it. I enjoy the part of uh, see how the, uh, the town has been run, you know, and I, uh, I really enjoy it. I really had a good time. And then after my wife passed away, I lost interest. You know, I uh, got out, you know, and I, I don't regret it. I'm glad I did it. I will never do it again. This is an election yeah. year, uh, or depending on when this is aired, mm. uh, this is an election year or in the past election. Right. And there are a lot of young candidates, uh, a couple of first-time candidates. Right. Give them some free advice. What, what, <laughs> uh, what would you say to a young, young person who wants to get into well, public service? The only satisfaction you get out of it, really, if you, if you really want to do it, is to... Stick to your opinion, regardless of what your party says. Okay. Because you, whatever you do, you do for the better for this, the town. And that is not the way the, some party members feel. That is the reason why I was kind of disappointed at the uh, politics. But I still enjoy it. Was, it was fun. You didn't have no, no of, regrets? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I made good, a lot of good friends. You know, Iris Papali, Bob Parisi. I mean, a lot of people that I that I'm still friends with it now, you know. But uh, it's it's tough, tough business. Politics is very tough business. Now, so you really gotta love it to be part of it. Yeah. Good, 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 good advice. Yeah, it is. Good it's tough. Now, you're retired, mm. except for that one day a week where yeah, you occasionally well, go in that's, and, that's and fun. cut hair. Um, I know you travel quite a bit. I do. Yes. Um, yeah. tell, us, tell us some of your... Yeah. <laughs> well, How just... many times have you been to Vegas? Gonna... <laughs> oh, no, no. Tell us about your travel. A couple traveling. times. I've been all over the world. I really... <laughs> I don't see... I didn't see... I see three quarters of the world. I've seen it. I've been to Africa, Russia, and, uh, uh, and I've been to... Uh, what do you call it? Oh, Jesus. Every continent? Almost every continent. Right. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I went to China, India, you name it, I've been there. Do you have a, lot a favorite? Of interesting places. Do you have a favorite? I, uh, I like Tanzania. I, I enjoyed that. I went to uh, doing the migration of the animals uh, between uh, Tanzania and Kenya. And there's nothing like watching on TV. It's being there with the animal, the running about the millions, you know, it was really interesting. And uh, one country that I visited I really enjoy is Bhutan. It's uh, between India and, uh, and China. Small country up there, which they still live like they did a thousand years ago. Very interesting place, yeah. But uh, India, it was beautiful too. That's a lot of nice places. I just came back from Italy. I was there five five months. And from there, I went to Prague and then I went to Greece. Good for you. While I was there, you know. And it was nice. It's a nice visit. I, I enjoyed to see how the other half the people live, you know. And, yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to ask when you go over there, when you visit all, all these countries, does, does it give you more of an appreciation for? For the yeah, States. you'd love to go back home because it's nothing like America. I don't care where you go. And uh, you and is, is that you, kind of renewed when you go to, you know, Tanzania? Yeah. Well, it's nice. You know, I mean, it, you, you find, you, find uh, you think well, how lucky you are to, lo to live in a country like America. Okay. And, uh, I think that's what's uh, the best part of it, you know. We're talking with uh, Tom Zapala, a uh, longtime barber, uh, still barber here in uh, Wallingford, <laughs> former councilman, uh, world traveler. Uh, <laughs> what else do you do in retirement? No, do you, any other? What, what's the best part of be, besides traveling? What's the best part of being retired? <laughs> well, I think it's, uh, it's nice to be able to travel, and I'd be fortunate enough to to see those 
country which I always dreamed about seeing, you know, and I, I, I didn't stop yet. I still got a lot, of, a lot of places to I like to be. I canceled the trip to Egypt twice, and I haven't been able to go yet. I went to Israel and uh, Greece and those places. I, but I, uh, I, I would love to go to Egypt. Yeah, I, I, I know there's eleven problems there. Mm -hmm. you know? But uh, it's, it's, do, do you, you, I'm assuming you feel safe when when you travel. It, you know, I there's, there's, I do. There's... You gotta you gotta use your you know you gotta use uh, your your what do you call your your thoughts. It's gotta be you gotta still you in a different country and you don't know who the guy next to you is. So you gotta be aware. You know you gotta yeah. you can be you can't take it for granted. You know the world is not the same anymore and. Uh, I think they uh, they achieved uh, what they want to. Those those people that don't like the West, you know. Do you have a bucket list? Does Tom Zapala have a bucket list? I think everybody does. You know? <laughs> I I Antarctic I haven't been. I've been to uh, to you know to what do you call that? I, I can forget the name of the places that do, but I like to go Antarctic one of these days. Yeah, I've been to Ireland, Scotland, all those areas, those places. Iceland. Iceland. Really? Iceland was beautiful. I enjoy Iceland. It was really very nice. Yeah, Iceland was nice. Yeah. Very good. And your and your health is good because I know it's just I've been very be lucky. Tough, I've been you. very lucky. Yeah, I've been very lucky. I uh, thank God I I feel okay. Good, good. good. You, yeah. you look marvelous. Thank you. <laughs> can I can I ask your age? Or? Oof, eighty two. Eighty-two. Yeah. God bless. Looks good. I'm 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 sixty-nine. You you look ten times better than me. So. <laughs> well, you know. look pretty good. You know, we were looking at the monitor before. We were talking about the two old Muppets, uh, but uh, but you're the much better looking Muppet. Oh, no, come on. Then, now. <laughs> um, we're talking with uh, Tom Zapala, kind of kind of reminiscing and uh, mm. talking about how well retirement is. Yeah. Um, I want to go back just just to barbering j just a bit, and mm. you know. When I was a kid, I went to the bar. My mother went to the beauty. Now it's styling, hair salon, <laughs> hairdress. You know, has the industry changed in, in your opinion? It's been a lot. Years ago, uh, you could not do women's hair at a barbershop. Was against the law. It was against the law. Yeah, You're it was kidding. against the law. Now, now you could do anything you want. Now you're coloring it, and mainly because the, the the state has a requirement. They use a requirement that you you put X amount of hours to whatever you want to be. But Barbara was fifteen hundred hours. A beautician were two thousand hours. I went to Set Academy hairdressing in New Haven. And Barbara got enough to go. I learned when I was a young kid. You know, so I. I grew up at a barber shop, so it's uh, easy for me to be, to be a barber. But you have to extend yourself to do more than just cut hair and shave, you know. So I went to hairdresser school, and which was really nice, and I it gave me more knowledge of uh, and the business. And uh, you cannot limit yourself on what you can do because the, I I think I took every course possible in New York when the new style came in or new. New products, new you know, came about. You gotta learn, and you you don't get rich on it because if you don't like the business, you shouldn't get involved. You if you like it, then it's a good thing. It, it's a good business. It makes you you raise a family and you have money in your pocket. It's, is is it a physically demanding job? I I know. I don't want to say his name, but I have a friend of mine that's a barber, and he says this the standing all day. Is it an eight-hour shift, or how long? How long is a shift? Well, I mean, I I remember days I worked thirteen hours, you know, <laughs> and, and standing up. <laughs> standing you up. can't sit down. And I there. think uh, have the proper shoes and the proper cushions on the floor is very, very, very that important. Helps. Very important. Right. I never forget when I get came to Center Street, you know. I had uh, the pointy shoes that at the time was a style to have, and uh, 
with uh, Tony Grillo, which was second chair man in the Central Barbershop, is you're not going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> he's, you got to get rid of those shoes. Is he, he, they just don't go in the business. You have to buy the proper, comfortable shoes with arch support. Did he take your advice? I did took his advice. Yeah. I did. Yeah, I did. I, uh, I always learned to buy very good shoes. It's important. And the problem you have is standing is your, your vein. I never had that problem because I used to play soccer. So I had a pretty good strong leg. That, I think that's what holds me up, you know? I wanted to ask you, if you walk down Center Street in 2019, it seems like every other storefront is a barbershop. <laughs> you know? I mean, you said the population of Wallingford is 54,000 now. I, I mean, is that, that enough heads to go around? To, for... uh, I, you know, I think it... And I think mainly because the the, the, the way the, the law changed is giving those kids the opportunity to open up as they feel like it. Years ago, we were the only one on Center Street. The, 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 there was a couple of up, uptown, and, uh, and uh, the, the, at the time, the total were about nine barbershops throughout the town. You know? Really? Yeah. It mainly because the men were in the barbershop and the women were in the beauty shop, you know. And uh, but now the the laws change and you, they could do whatever they want to do. That's too many, I think. Too many. Too many. What What's the best advice you would give someone, uh, a young person just out of school who wants to be the next Tom's Apollo, want, <laughs> want, wants to be a barber? What's give them some free advice? If you like the trade, you gotta like you gotta like what you're doing because if you don't like it, you don't gonna get rich on it. You're gonna make a living, but you gotta stay with it. You gotta learn uh, to produce uh, to better yourself. You know because uh, you, you never stop learning. Like any any business, you gotta learn more. As, as things change, you gotta change with it. You know uh, you gotta stay with the style. Today's style drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but I do it. Yep. I do it because that's the demand. You know, yep. years ago the Beatles and what they started, so I did that. Although it was not too accepted by the barber business because the long hair nobody gets a yeah. cut, you know? Yeah. But you learn how to cut long hair because that was the style at the time. So you have to change with the time and you have to learn how to do yeah. everything it takes to be to learn, you know? Well, Tom, this has been a, a fascinating half yeah, hour. You've uh, right. you've had led a very uh, a very <laughs> wonderful you. life. We want to thank you for uh, for thank coming you. in. This has been fun. Thank you. Fun. Thank you for having me. All right. All right, that's it for this edition of Local Lens. Uh, my name is Edward McCarver, and uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>